Yes, I am, but go ahead. <laughs> no, you're fine. No, no, tell me. What? I'm yeah, I'm live, but it's cool. No. Oh, it's about a post on Okay, well, yeah, I'm actually about to start talking about some stuff on there. Good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well today. Ann was about to tell me about a post on the Academy, so, uh, but, uh, <laughs> Guess she doesn't want to go live and talk about it. Uh, it is Friday. It is the end of May, and life is good right now. Hey, um, you know I've been noticing some some little things here on the academy. Uh, thought it was just wanted to address it. Um, there was recently a post about you know the guy the one forty nine over in uh, Jacksonville, Florida. I made a, a written response to that as well. Um, why don't you just go over some numbers on, on this and, and let you let, let guys think about that. Okay. Um, so somebody puts 149 out there for a house. Now, uh, Jacksonville is filled with tracked home type neighborhoods. And, uh, so if he's going out and, and doing houses at 149 and his ad actually says starting at, um, Let's say that's that's the the teaser rate or the the rate that comes in. Um, so if he's able to knock out four at 150 a day, now keep in mind, Florida, we get to work year round. Uh, in fact, we have to work year round. <laughs> um, if you knock out four houses a day, six hundred dollars six hundred dollars a day. Um, this guy had a landscape firm. And um, I don't know if he actually has a large landscape firm, small landscape firm, if this is an add-on service, if he's got a helper, he's giving that to it. But I'm going to go under the assumption that, that he's got a couple people working for him. So let's say he takes one go-getter. He pays him $20 an hour. Um, $20 an hour, uh, $40,000 a year roughly out there. Um, Rounded up after you know his his tax liability tax burden on there, he's paying the guy fifty thousand dollars a year for doing that. Now, if he's grossing six hundred a day um, with that guy, it's one hundred eighty thousand dollars a year if he works three hundred days a year doing that. Um, Troy, I'll answer that question in one second. Let me get off this thought. Um, so $180,000 a year gross, uh, paying a guy $50,000 a year. Say he's got another $30,000 a year in, in uh, costs on that, uh, additional cost. He's just added $100,000 to his bottom line before taxes. Hell, let's say he, he's it's costing him you know, $120,000 a year to do that. He's just added $60,000 a year to his bottom line. It's just, it's kind of something to think about out there. You know, everybody has their, their place in the food chain. Um, there's value services, there's expensive services, you know, I'm assuming that somebody, you know, with a, with a 8,000 square foot house over in Bay Meadow probably isn't going to be calling for the $149 house wash out there. If, if they do, they're really not that smart of a person. Uh, but, but somebody with a, um, you know, 2,000 square foot single story or two story um, tracked home, knock it out, every house in the neighborhood's the same, boom, 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 boom. You know, is it really that, that bad of a business model out there uh, to people? Uh, just food for thought. I mean, you could make a lot of money on value priced services out there. It's, this it's not what I would want to do, but um, and it's not necessarily killing the market like everybody thinks. Because I can promise you that a lot of my customers having value priced customer services out there, it really keeps a lot of the phone calls away from us. Because if they're going to call the cheap guy. Let them call the cheap guy because they're not really my customer out there. Uh, but don't just automatically discount those, um, those, those value guys and saying, oh, well, they're bottom feeding hacks that, that aren't doing anything because um, people can make plenty of money. Don, I agree. Um, why is everybody focused on to what other people are charging out here? 
Uh, Troy, to answer your question, it seems like my highest one was 14 stories um, where I've, I've operated a pressure washer up there. And um, I was not downstreaming or X jetting. I was using that for rents. So I don't know, you know, you probably have a real hard time downstreaming uh, and getting the carrying capacity on that. I would think that would mess up because you're, you're limited to what, 300 feet anyway on downstreaming, typically speaking from the point of the downstreamer. Um, so, uh, but yeah, 13, 14, maybe 15 stories. Um, you know, we had that up there to help us rents on there. And, you know, it worked uh, pretty good. Now, I have had, um, like, that hospital that I did um, end of last year. We were swing staging it. That was only eight or nine stories. But we had, like, 600-foot runs of pressure hose out there. Uh, and we were able to, uh, to work on that, you know, as well, too. Still got uh, good pressure from both the booster and the pressure washer at the end of 600 feet. Um, and Don, what you were saying, you know, why is everybody so, um, um, you know, focused? I don't know why that is. I, I do want to say this, you know, it, it's actually amazing with, with what's happened on Facebook in general. Um, that we don't have even more competition out there. Cause I know that there's a couple, well, one in particular for them that, um, you know, if you say anything about pressure washing, painting, landscaping, anything like that, the moderator out there goes and sticks you in that group and people, you know, sit there and say, how the hell did I get in this group? I don't know. And then they start looking and what's happened is that's one of those groups where people love to brag on how much they make. Um, you know what, how much you make is really your own business. But whenever you get out there onto a forum and go, I made $2,200 today before three o'clock or before two o'clock, um, on a forum of, of, you know, 10,000 people or something out there, you know, a lot of people sit there and go, Oh my God, why aren't I, why, why am I not in the pressure washing industry? Um, this doesn't look that hard. I'm going to get out here and do it, you know, because this guy, according to him, he's been doing it for three months and he's making $2,000 a day. Um, hell, if I'd have seen that years ago, I would have rushed into the pressure washing industry out there. Uh, so we're not doing ourselves any favor whenever we sit there and brag about how much, you know, we make. Um, in fact, we're kind of cutting our own throats out there. Um, Jose, what's up, buddy? Call me old. That's distinguished. It's not old. <laughs> not Troy. You're fine, buddy. Um, yeah, Doug, you're absolutely right. You know, fulfill your dream, charge what you're worth, do what you do. And, to the best of your ability. I totally agree with that. You know, we shouldn't be, you know, we should be worried about delivering the best service possible. You know, everybody has a role to play in this life. I mean, there's expensive people, there's bottom feeding people. I don't give a crap what you charge. Uh, but if you're going to be a bottom feeder, do it right. You know, if you've ever seen one of my classes, I usually say I have, you know, three rules. Um, don't hurt the property. Don't hurt yourself or your customers and, you know, get paid. Other than that, figure out your own business model out there. Now, if you're figuring out a business model, you should definitely err on the side of caution. If you say, well, I'm going to take $79 and uh, I'm going to do it for $79 because there's other guys out here who are doing it for $89. I'm going to go out here and and, 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 and buy the market in that respect. It's probably not a really good business decision because you wind up killing the market and then, you know, you're out of business in two years because there is a certain price point that's not sustainable. It's really not sustainable. Um, in fact, we hear that a lot of the times, you know, we see this all all the time where, well, the guy last year did it for $120. Well, why didn't you call him? Wait, his phone's out of service. 
he's out of business. Well, maybe he charged too little out there. Um, if you're going to charge little bits of money, the only way to do it is to make up for it in volume. You can't go in there and do value service. Um, I mean, that's it's why Walmart is successful. You know, why Walmart's putting mom and pops out of business out there. Walmart doesn't charge as much as the mom and pop stores, but they make it up in volume. So if you're going to go value price, you better go big volume. You know, and if you're one of the guys considering value price and you don't live in Florida or Arizona or Southern California, or I guess really almost anywhere in California, um, yes. you know, you have to take into account that, um, you know, you're not going to be able to work year round or it's going to be really miserable if you do try to work year round. And I mean, some places it's just physically impossible to work year round. Um so keep that in mind, you know, I was actually talking to a very good friend the other day, a real good friend. And, and he was, you know, bemoaning the fact that it's like, you know, you, you sit there and you, you get your, your, your ass kicked, you know, over a wintertime area. And then if you have a slow spring, um, you know, it stays cold or a late spring, I shouldn't say slow, you know, you work, 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 and then you get to a certain point in the summertime where you're like, well, crap, now I got to start saving so I can eat this winter. Um, and, and then winter comes early and you don't save enough money and you're living on credit. So everybody's market's different. That's one of the things that I love about this business is every market is different. And the longer that I'm in this business, I realize how little that I actually know. The good news is, too, the longer I'm in this business, the more I realize how much I do know. Because the core principles of this business is the same no matter where you go, from Washington State to Key West. People call you because something is dirty. And they want you to remove the dirty. So it's really that basic. Now, there's 10,000 different ways of removing that dirty. Um, and, and, and it's going to change by region. It's going to change by temperature. It's going to change by climate. It's going to, you know, change by, by regulations everywhere. So a um, lot of, lot of stuff. Hey, no value pricing in Arizona. I love it, Jeff. That's incredible. Um, you know, the other thing too, um, I want you to just think about this too. If you're in business, if you're going to be self-employed, if this is your first foray into the, into the business, um, and you can't take a little criticism, you're not going to go far in business. Um, you're just not, you know, and, and this isn't, this isn't a, you know, Oh, come here, baby. Let me rub your shoulder kind of thing. And, and you know, if, if you want to pay me for coaching on that, I'll be happy to do that and stroke your ego off. But you're on a Facebook freaking forum, man. You want a friend, buy a dog. <laughs> and so many people, um, you know, I see them asking for advice, but it's not they don't really want advice. They actually want justification for bad choices that they've made. You know, they want somebody going, yeah, it's okay to do that. Yeah, it's okay to do that. And then they get kind of butt hurt whenever people go, yeah, I wouldn't do it like that. Um, and then on the other part too is you are on Facebook and words do have consequences. And this is the exact opposite of what I just said, you should be able to take a, a, a little bit of criticism, but you know, don't say anything here to people that you wouldn't say to them to their face. I mean, I see some of the responses out here and some of you guys are just dicks. Um, you get popped in the nose if you talk to people like that in real life. I'm sorry. Um, and you know, you know, you don't talk to your customers like that in real life. Um, we just don't, man. So 
try to temper your 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 stuff a little bit whenever you're talking to guys. Um, there's no need in, in going out of your way to be an asshole. And in fact, if you want to go out of your way to be an asshole, don't do it on Spray Wash Academy. Although I still think we're actually a, a pretty darn good, you know, forum on here with with not, you know, our asshole quotient isn't overly high as many of the forums are. Um, let me read some comments over here. John Foley, good morning. Jeff, thank you, sir. Uh, Mike Kilgore, always good to know you're chiming in. If anybody hasn't uh, used uh, Mike Kilgore's products, awesome, awesome place. Three Eye Supply. Anytime I've, I've ordered anything from Mike, he's super fast on on um, getting getting stuff out to me. Three Eye Supply.com. Steve Hill, my little buddy in Mississippi. Steve is a power wash store franchise owner out there, and he's a washer too. Gene O'Neill, you know, sir, you are a person that I truly respect, and um, you're right. Hey, Gene said we could be helping ourselves. Depends on how you look at it. If they're not doing it right, that's true. You know, we do offer some advice to people, uh, and um, yeah, might be helping ourselves and helping our markets. Um, you know, and whenever you see people, again, the pricing thing, it's up to you. Um, I think sometimes the low pricing, the value pricing starting at 149 isn't necessarily a guy who's killing the market out there. Uh, it might be his sales tool. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, to, to relate it to something we might be familiar with. I mean, how many times have we gone in, you know, it's like a loss leader, a Black Friday type type scenario out there um, or, or, you know, options on a truck you're buying. So, you know, you see the price. Hey, Ford F-150 from $24,995, like, holy crap selling Fords for $25,000, but then you walk in and you realize it's a standard shift, single cab, uh, crank window, strip down truck. Well, yeah, I'd like air conditioning. God, it'd suck to drive a, a stick. <laughs> An extended cab would be cool. Those rims are freaking hideous. Next thing you know, you wind up walking out of the Ford dealership with, with a $40,000 truck instead of the $24,000 truck that you came in to buy. So uh, it happens in, in um, it happens in places, you know, all over the world, not just the pressure washing business. So sometimes as value service guys, um, they're doing better than they think, doing better than you think. Um, <laughs> TJ, <laughs> if you can't say nothing nice about somebody, just come sit by me. Stephen Harp, good to see you, buddy. Rich, it is too hot to be a $99 guy. I can go broke sitting on my couch. I ain't going to do it sweating. Hey, um, you guys have an awesome morning. Be kind. Be profitable. Be awesome. I'm taking the rest of the day off. See ya.